Carlton. CP, can you hear me? Hey, mate. Cole, I can. Yes. Yes, there he is. Hey, mate, you all right? Hi, mate. Yeah, good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, I'm all right. Yeah, I'm good, thanks. The volume's a bit low. Let me see if I can turn the volume up a bit. Okay. I'm not I'm not really computer I'm not really computer savvy, really. It's my missus who does. I was about to say, why but does why does that not surprise me? Listen, <laughs> if you want to phone somebody, you dial the number. If they want to phone you, you dial them and you pick up the phone and you answer it, don't you? It's as simple as it is, isn't it? Hey, by the way, I'm I'm liking those specs, by the way. That they're they're a new addition. I've always wore glasses, you know. I've all, since 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 a kid, I've always wore glasses. So when I played, I wore contact lenses. But now I've got contact lenses and glasses on top of the contact lens. <laughs> it's called age, my friend. Oh, tell me about it. Tell me about it. Good to Listen, see you, Rob. That's great. It's great to see you. Really great to see you. What a thrill! And tell me, how is how is Shanghai? Yeah, we, we've been back now. We got back here 23rd of March. Um, and every, it, it, it's very stringent here. So when we landed, we got, you know, the plane. We had to sit on the plane. Then we were taken to get tested. Then we had to stay in a hotel overnight. Then we had to stay in the house for two weeks. They put a device on the door that you can open it, open it three times a day to collect food and put wow. your rubbish out for two weeks. But then as soon as you've done your two weeks, that's it, you're free to go. Pubs, bars, restaurants, everything are open. Gyms are open. Schools are now starting to reopen. Some of us, because we're an international school, we'll probably be the last to open because they, at the moment now, it's the foreigners like who are coming back to Shanghai to work who are bringing the virus back in. So we'll probably be, be the last to open, maybe mid-May or something like that. Because I was reading, I did some reading this morning on it. Because it's obviously over here. I mean, I know you were back in England. But everybody goes, "Oh, China! We don't want to go to China." China. But Shanghai have been absolutely on it like a car bonnet, haven't they? From the off. Listen, it's the safest place to be, mate. I'm telling you. I mean, uh, the UK, and we were saying, Lucy and I were back in the UK because when it broke, um, we 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 were on our Chinese New Year holiday. We were in the Maldives when it broke. And we got, uh, Lucy got wind of it, because I, when I'm on holiday, you know me, I'm not on my phone or emails and all that yeah. rubbish, you know, I'm at the bar. So Lucy's, Lucy's got uh, wind of it, and she said, right, listen, Carlton, there's a problem, um, so let's go back to the UK. So we, we, we flew back to Shanghai, we landed on the 28th of, um, we landed on the 28th of January, we literally landed at 11 o'clock, we got... We got tested when temperature and everything, it was stringent coming in, went to the apartment, grabbed stuff, and then left first thing in the morning. We landed, so a plane coming in from Shanghai, no testing for anybody. Even before we came back, we went to Portugal, and we landed back the 17th of March, no testing. You can't get into Shanghai without testing and whatever and do yeah. the two weeks quarantine. You see people in out and about, it's crazy, because they're endangering other people's lives you know mm. when we left it was his day and my dad's birthday and we and we didn't go and see them because it's yeah. just it's just not worth it what about shanghai in terms of a lockdown with, with bars restaurants everything that's it shot as soon as it broke here everything was shut immediately schools bars restaurants businesses everything shut completely shut and everybody was had to do the isolation and on every compound there's police so if you, you, you're just not you're just not allowed you're just not allowed out yeah. and because they did, yeah. because they've done the stringent tense testing they've been managed to get it under control the people now who are bringing it back into shanghai yeah. like now the other night there was i think there was a plane came in from russia with because you can still come in if you're a chinese citizen although they've closed the border so this plane had come in from Russia, but a lot of these people coming back would come from Italy, places yeah. that had, have got high, um, high, high, high dosage of I people who've got it. But as soon as they've landed, they've, 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 no, they've put them straight in. If you don't pass the, the, um, the test, right, they put you into quarantine. 
in a hotel, in a compound or whatever. So they have been put away now for two weeks until they're in a position where, you know, they, they, they're clear. Yeah, Nathan, okay. Um, let's talk about Shanghai and your life in general. Um, uh, we met, obviously, well, we met years ago, but we were together in Dubai when you were coaching at a school and you had your own academy. Is it the same kind? Is that why you went to Shanghai in the first place? Yeah, well, you know, like when I was in Dubai, I loved it. And my sister was over there. It was easy to commute to the UK. So it was perfect for me. But as you know, Rob, we lost, lost the rights to the TV. But I was still working in an international school doing the, the soccer academy. Yeah. So the master at the time there, David Cook, um, said to me, listen, we're going to open a, a school in Shanghai. Would you be interested? And I thought, China? I don't think so. Do you know what I mean? It's like... You know, and, and so I said to Luce, I said, what, because Luce wasn't with me in Dubai because she was back at home with the kids and I was traveling backwards and forwards. So I said to yeah. her, what, what do you think, look, what do you think, love? Because I said, I'm not doing any more time without you. What do you think? So th she said, well, I'll come out and have a look. So we came out for a, for a week, met Joy Chow, who, Joy Chow, who's the owner of our company, which is, we're affiliated. So Wellington, UK, this is a school yeah. affiliated with Willow. Yeah, 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 yeah. So George, George Chow was the first Chinese woman to graduate from Oxford. So she, she, she met us out here with the principal and, and we were there for a week and, and we both said, well, we like Shanghai. I mean, like if you go down downtown on the Bund, it's like London or New York. It's phenomenal, all the lights and everything's going off. So we said we'd give it a go. Six years later, we're still here with another two and a <laughs> half years left on our track. I love it here. The people, I love the way the people are out here, Rob. The Chinese people, they do. You, we go to a fancy dress party and go on the tube. Nobody looks at you. They're not bothered. <laughs> <laughs> they're just not bothered. <laughs> and, they're, and they're very loyal people. So if you work hard, they yeah. look after you. Only the fact that you work hard. You know, they don't have a time or, you know, to say, right, okay, your job's from this time to that time. You just, you just do your job. That's the way they are. That's why they, you know, they are one of the leading powers. And trust me, in the next 10 years, they will be the biggest power in the world without a shadow of doubt. Listen, tell me about the football, because you've gone at a time when football has boomed, really, haven't you? I mean, what, what, is the, what is it like for you at a weekend? Do you get the Premier League and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, we get it all. I mean, it's, we, we get it all, unfortunately, because of the time difference, sure. which is not a problem for me. Because I, don't mean, I don't mind drinking late into the night, as you know. Um, but, you know, um, yeah, we get all the Premier League. We get all the football. Um, so it's blinding. And we get, you know, I, I, I go from here to um, Kuala Lumpur. Um, the college are brilliant with me. And I, I, I go down and work for uh, Astro Sports every, every now and again and do a bit of the the commentary to commentate on, on live games. So, yeah, still stay in touch with the football. What's the standard like in your, uh, at the local level? I mean, the, the, the money they spent originally getting some of the stars over was massive. There's so many, you know, Premier League, ex-Premier League stars and, and world stars over there still. What, what's the standard like? And do, do you ever go to the games? Yeah, I've been to the games because what we do is at, at our school, all the, all the players, they've done a deal. So all the players, their kids come to, 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 to our school. So it's brilliant for our kids, you know, when Oscar's walking in with his daughter and his son and Alk's walking in with his two boys. It's brilliant for the kids, do you know what I mean? Um, but the standard's poor, without a shadow of a doubt. The standard's poor. And what the Chinese have done, fair play to them, early on they recognised that it wasn't going to work just throwing money at it. Yeah. You know, bringing in Oscar on 600 grand a week and Alkin and 400 grand a week. They, so they salary capped it. And what they've done now to, because you've got to remember now, it was only compulsory to play football in schools two years ago. All right. never compulsory. It's always been the education that comes first. So what they've done now is they've salary capped it now. And they've also made the one under 21 or under 23 Chinese player has to play. And you've got seven Chinese players playing on the day. So it is going to increase. And they're getting the best coaches from Europe, like, you know, Benitez is here and, and people like that. So it, it quickly, because they're putting a structure in place rather than, you know, at first we'll get all these 
people, it's, it's going to take time. So now sure. they've got an infrastructure in place. Yeah, so I, without a shadow of doubt, in years to come, they, they will be a force for sure. Well, who are the big teams? I mean, I know in Dubai, there was a bit of glory hunting going on. There was all Barcelona, Real Madrid. There weren't too many Sheffield Wednesdays or Wigan Athletics or whatever. Who are the big teams over there that the, the kids follow? Oh, well, always the same, isn't it? Over here. It, it, in, well, in Sheffield Wednesday, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Well, funny enough, Rob, when Sheffield Wednesday were in the, in the playoff final, I went to the pub and there was, there was a load of Sheffield Wednesday supporters yeah, in there with their blue and white kit on. Brilliant. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, Rob, to be honest with you, it's a no, it's a massive expat community out here. Because, Rob, if you... Listen, no disrespect to the UK. I love the UK, but I've been outside the UK now for over 11 years. Why did I leave the UK? Because I wasn't getting the opportunities that I wanted, that I, wanted, that I deserved. So if you're brave enough, if you are... If you, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you can put yourself out of the box, like my missus, my missus is, is a teacher back in the UK, right? In, she's been here six years now. She is now head of Wellington pre-prep years three, four, and five. Of lower prep, right, of three, four, and five on four times the salary. Yeah. So you, you look at that in the UK where we don't, we don't reward people like our teachers or our nurses or our doctors. They do the jobs that they do. They do a fantastic job, but yet they're still not re rewarded numerically. So if you're brave enough to go abroad and you've got kids, so if you've got kids, your kids get to, to go to the private school for free with the, some of the best teachers in the world, right? So they get a great education. So it's just been brave enough because the world's a small place now. You know, we, we, we get good holidays. And, and you say it's 11 hour, 40 minutes, but you know that, Rob, when you're in first class, you get a few beers down your own quickly, aren't you? <laughs> Where do you where do you go on holiday? What's your what's your local? I mean, I'm sort of nipping over to France now. Now I'm back in England. Where where do you, well not at the moment, but where do you go? Where's your little uh, casual jaunts for holidays out that way? Well, our favourite is September, the uh, the middle of September. We go to Bali. Love Bali. Four hours flight for us from here. Hong Kong's two hours. If like you know, if you fancy a weekend in Hong Kong. You know, if Lucy's birthday or whatever, we've been there for a weekend. But we love Bali, four hours. We love going to um, Boracay. Boracay. Thailand's only four hours away. Um, you know, so there's great places. I mean, the Maldives, we go every, every February. We really love that. But that's the same flight as it would be from the UK. But, you know, um, but there's loads of places that you can get to. Vietnam, Cambodia all within easy travelling distance, three or four hours, you know? But our favourite, I would say, is Bali in September. We love Bali. Beautiful part of the world. Do you think, do you, think you will, when, you, when your contract finishes, will you live abroad or will you come back to the UK? Well, the plan is now, we've had, we've had a place in Portugal for, for 30 years now. So we love Portugal. So the plan is we would live six months in Portugal and six months in the UK. We love the UK. You know, when you come back to the UK and the weather's good, right? Yeah. There is no better place. Where we live yeah. in Sheffield, 20 minutes drive. We're, we're, it's beautiful where we are. Derbyshire and all around there. You know, my wife, all her family's in, 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 uh, in Sheffield. So, yeah, the plan is, you know, um, we, will, we will return to the UK. But, and, and spend six months in Portugal. But I mean, my, my case is that I love the sun, me, Rob. And, and the warm weather is, you know, what attracted me to Dubai, what attracted yeah. me to Shanghai, you know, and, that, and that's what we like, getting up and being able to run and cycle and do all those things. But yeah, we're still, our kids are in, we have four children, so our kids are in the UK. We have two grandkids now. So when we've retired, we can enjoy it a little bit. Yeah. Listen, uh, let me ask you a couple of football ones. Who was, uh, what was your best spell of your career? The one you enjoyed the most club-wise? Sheffield Wednesday. Best, best, best time of my life. Um, you know, when I went there, I was a young kid. And, and there was a lot of young kids who were signed at the time. Ersty being the big mucker at the time. 
Um, and so we had a great time playing football and off the field. We caused, caused complete carnage. Yeah? It's brilliant. <laughs> so did you play? I was reading today. It would have suited you if you had sort of John Sheridan and Chris Waddle. But you did all the work, you see. That was it, wasn't it? Those two, two fly-by-nights. No, but that's, but that's a fallacy. And I, I was talking about this the other day. That is a fallacy. You cannot play in a top side and carry anybody. You cannot. And this is what I was on about the other day when they are talking about Jack Grealish being, being, being uh, the next Beckham or being the next whatever. He's got a change. He, he, he's good on the ball. There's no doubt about it. I've followed Jack Grealish since he was a kid when he made his debut for the, for the youngsters for Villa um, in, in Hong Kong. Hugely talented. But there's more to the game than that. You watch Chris Waddle play. He tracks back John Sheridan. When we play John Sheridan, this is where people had the myth. I always used to take, the, the, I always used to take their player that sat. So if we were playing Man United... Chez would take the runner because he would play deep. I would then go on to their player who couldn't run, whether it was Scalzi or whatever. So you can't play in a modern game without these players in the top side that's going to win trophies with passengers. And for me, Grealish, why do you think they play him on the left-hand side? Why? I, watched, I did the game against Leicester when they played um, Aston, uh, when, when Aston Villa played Leicester at, at Villa Park. And all they yeah. did is they on him and he didn't track back he did he looked at the, he looked at the fullback he wasn't going to go you, you need more than just he's he is a he is an, a talent and an enigma who may score 12 or 14 goals but if you're going to be that type of player you've got to deliver more than that you've got to be a Matt Letizia you've got to be delivering 25 goals a season and have the ability that he has to change a game on the head so when you talk about the, the likes of Waddle and Sheridan you're talking about players on a different level on a different level. So I didn't do their work for them. They did their share of graft that they had to do. What, um, what would you prefer? Would you prefer playing in midfield or would you prefer playing centre-half or maybe in a three at the back, if you had a choice? Well, to be honest with you, Rob, I, my, my natural position is centre-back. That is my natural position. Big Ron moved me into midfield because he said I had too much energy, right? Um, out of choice, I would prefer to play at centre-back, and, and that's yeah. why I went to Leeds United. I enjoyed in a two. That. In, in a two? In a two or a three. In yeah. a two or a three, it didn't matter to me. I played in a three for England. Um, it didn't matter to me. And I went to Leeds. I played well at, at, at centre-back, but and, and, I, and I didn't get capped again. But that's more to do with the politics of the sport that was changing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, Teddy Venables took over. It's then the London Mafia and the press and whatever. <laughs> then I can still, but then I can still argue, right? When I look at it, Gary Pallister was playing for Man United at the time. And he's a big mate of mine. And I think Gary Pallister was a terrific footballer. And, a terrific, and only got six caps. So I, yeah. And I got 18. So there's no time or reason. Maybe, yeah. maybe... You know, we would argue. But at the time, having said that, the two centre-backs playing for England at the time were Des Walker and Tony Adams. So you've got two, you've got two really top-notch players to have to display, haven't you? Now, listen, let me ask you this. Um, you, you were ill, weren't you? You, you, had a, you had a big scare when you were playing in the Masters football, which ended up you had heart surgery and what have you, which is, what, a couple of years ago now? How are you, basically? And, and can you run and all that kind of thing still? Yeah, no, I mean, it was a massive scare. It really was. Um, I, I, I'd, I'd had a, I, to be fair to you, Rob, and I have to put my hand up, and, and this is what I've been doing when I speak to people. There's blokes. We give you all that macho thing, don't we? Oh, we're all right. It's nothing wrong. It's nothing wrong. See if you've got a problem, get it checked out. My yeah. mother was on holiday with me in or how many years ago she said there was something wrong with my breathing. Lucy had said to me time and time there was something wrong with my breathing. Oh, don't worry about it. It'll be fine. Yeah. It'll be fine. She didn't want me to go and play in the game. It was lucky I went and played in the game. Had that have happened yeah. to me anywhere else, and there was not medical treatment there at the time, I would have died. So yeah. I, you know, I, I had the surgery. The surgery was success. Um, I'm now back running. I've just come in tonight from work. I've just run... Uh, 10Ks in 49 minutes. 
So I'm back there. He said, he said, uh, you know, on, he said, unless I'm stupid, I won't ever have a problem. So watch the binge drinking. So I'm yep. only down to the 20, yep. 20 pints a yep. night now. <laughs> That's good to hear, mate. That's good to hear. Um, listen, um, it's absolutely fantastic. No, uh, well, 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 what I decided to do, what I decided to do, Rob, I, I, I said to Lucy, I said, listen, without being morbid or anything like that, you've got to live your life, haven't you? So as long as you're not daft, I'm not, I'm not like running around like I used to be, trying to break records, doing whatever. I'm actually acting my age now. I'm 54, you know. But I said to Luce, you've got to live your life. I'm not going to sit here because if I didn't drink and I didn't play football, I'd be a miserable bastard. That's as simple <laughs> as it is. <laughs> Listen, on that note, fantastic talking to you as always. Love to Lucy and I look forward to seeing you soon, pal. Yeah. All the best to you. Thanks, Rob. Love to the family and the kids, and I'll see you soon, pal. Take care, Carl. All the best, mate. Cheers. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye, Rob. Bye. Bye, Lucy. Bye.